Sometimes people don't get stuff, and that's funny to me, too. Because when I'm out there in California, I go around and ask people trivia questions. And I ask easier, easy, easy questions. Like this one. You can all answer this. What became mandatory equipment on all U.S. cars in 1968? The seat belts, right. One night I asked that on the front row, this guy, he had too much to drink. I said, hey, sir, what became mandatory on all, uh, uh, equipment on all cars in 1968? He looks up and he goes, the brakes? <laughs> I said, the brakes? I said, yes, sir, Mr. Flintstone, that is correct. You need to get out of bedrock, my man. My favorite was this guy uh, at the improv one night, he was from South Carolina, and they had this real thick accent like that. So we kept going back and forth with the accent, and I asked him this old comedy qu uh, question, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? And the answer is a stick. You got that? So I thought I'd make him laugh. He almost killed me. He had two syllables for his name. His name was Jim. I said, hi, Jim. He goes, what? I said, hey, Jim, what you call a boomerang that don't come back, Jim? He looks up, he goes, gone. <laughs> and then there was the time, I don't know if I can say this, but I was working at the improv. There's 300 people in the crowd, and I was talking to people. And uh, I asked this lady, I said, hey, what's your name? She stands up in front of everyone. She says, my name is Heidi. I said, Heidi, what do you do for a living? She said, I do sales. I said, what do you sell? She goes, I'm a prostitute <laughs> in front of 300 people. I called her Heidi Ho the rest of the show. <laughs> so to me, that's funny. <laughs> Only in California is somebody going to stand up in front of 300 people and say, I'm a prostitute, man. I broke up with it that night. Yeah. <laughs> I have only met one person who didn't like Cajun people and... Uh, it was in Orange County, California, and it was really weird. I've never had this before. A guy was staring at me while I'm doing my set. I saw him at the break. I said, excuse me, sir, everybody around your table is having a great time. You look at me like you hate me. And this guy goes, I do. And I said, how can that be? We never met before. He goes, I was in Louisiana one time. I was beaten up by about 10 Cajuns. So I hate you. Taking it out on me. I said, in the first place, that cannot be true. Cajun people are the nicest, warmest people on earth. They wouldn't hurt a fly. He goes, I don't care. I was beaten up down there, so I hate you. So I beat the hell out of that dude, man, you know? <laughs> You know, the thing they like in California the most is when I tell stories about my uncle, Raul. Raul Boudreau is so funny. He lives in Cade, Louisiana. He's 73 years old. He's retired. He wears a big hat wherever he goes, and he just says what's on his mind no matter what. He gets things kind of backwards. Like, for instance, he keeps a spare key locked in his truck in case he locks himself out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Again, I'm going to pause for a minute. <laughs> I passed by my uncle's headlands one day in the sugarcane field, and he's standing out there stiff as a board. I passed back in the afternoon, he's still there. So I got out my car, and I went, I said, Uncle Raul, you've been out here all day? He goes, yes, sir. I'm trying to win that Nobel Prize. I said, the Nobel Prize? He goes, yes, sir. I read somewhere that every year that's an award is given out to a man who's outstanding in his field. <laughs> and, <laughs> So anyway, you can imagine, that's who taught me how to drive when I first started driving. Oh, my goodness. 
The first time we were driving in his pickup truck, everything was fine till we got to a red light. He went right through the red light. Shoom! I said, didn't you see that? It was a red light. He goes, oh yeah, Pat, not seeing the red light. Don't worry about them red lights. My uncle taught me how to drive, now I'm teaching you how to drive. And my uncle, he don't stop for no red light. Next red light, right through it again. Shoom! I said, look, another red light. He goes, don't worry about them red lights. I'm telling you, man, my uncle is the best driver in the world. He taught me he don't stop for no red light. One more after another, he wouldn't even slow down. We got to green light. He slammed on the brakes. I said, look, it's green now. He goes, yeah, I see it, partner. That's my uncle coming through the intersection. <laughs> Then about a half mile down the road, we hit a cat. Oh, he felt so bad. He went out on the neighbor's door. He goes, ma'am, I'm so sorry. I do believe I done hit your cat in the road. She goes, well, Raul, I have a lot of cats. What the cat look like? He goes, well. She said, no. What did the cat look like before you hit it? He goes, well... <laughs> so one time my uncle was going 85 miles an hour and this young deputy in New Iberia pulls him over and he's red in the face. He goes, sir, you're going 85 miles an hour. Give me your license. And my uncle goes, I ain't got no license. They took that away from me when I got my fifth DUI. So he goes, give me a registration. He goes, no, I ain't got no registration. This ain't my car. I stole the car. So he goes, open the trunk. He goes, you don't want to see that. Uh-uh. Back there in the trunk is the dead body I just had to shoot to get this car from. A lot of blood back there. So the deputy grabbed his keys and he called the sheriff. They're surrounded by police. And the sheriff had played ball with my uncle in high school. He recognized him. He comes up. He goes, Raru, that's you? You don't have a license? He goes, yeah, buddy, I got one. Here you go. He goes, you got a registration? He goes, yeah, here you go. He goes, open the trunk. Nobody's in the trunk. The sheriff comes back. He goes, I don't understand. This young deputy called me on the phone. He said, you had five DUIs, no license. You had a stolen car. You had a dead body in the trunk. My uncle goes, what? I bet that bastard said I was speeding too, huh?